Hey everybody, so we have a fish emergency today. I uh, just got home from work tonight and I found a dead fish in one of my ponds. Let me show you. Yeah, this guy here, belly up, found him tonight for scale. He's about the size of a hand, length of a hand anyways. Uh, yeah, he was floating belly up. So obviously that's never good when you find a fish belly up in your pond. So I um, immediately did a water check. Woo, sorry about that. Immediately tested the water and man, we are in nitrates in the 250 to 350 range. That is definitely toxic. I don't know what caused that because I just checked it last, well, maybe two weeks ago and it was normal ranges. So something occurred that caused the nitrates to spike. This is in the other pond, not the one that we test, we resolved the nitrate issue in last week. It's my other pond. And so now we have to resolve it again, but this is an emergency because we are in dead toxic ranges. So let me show you what I'm doing. All right, so we're working out here under flashlight. I apologize about that. It is nighttime, uh, but you gotta do what you gotta do when you gotta do it. So we are doing a, a, a water change right away. We're gonna do about 50%, uh, 60% water change today. We'll probably do another one tomorrow. A 50% water change should bring us down into toxic levels, but not like kill fish right away toxic levels. So now I wanted to show you these products as well. Uh, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Okay, so we have a couple of things here that we are adding into the water because this is an emergency. And that is these bags right here. This is activated charcoal. I think that's right. Activated charcoal and zeolite. And then we have this other pad right here which I'm going to grab the package for that so you can see what that is. All right, so this is for that pad right there. And this is a nitrate absorbing pad. And uh, I just happened to have this. I got this early on when I started doing this fish stuff. And I'm glad I had it on hand because we can throw that in there in an emergency. It does absorb nitrates. And I've used it before long ago. It worked great. <clears throat> the other stuff is this right here. It's a zeolite blend of activated carbon with these zeolites and these also work great they will absorb the uh, the nitrates out of there uh, now you want to remove these both these this and the and I put these in that, that mesh bag but you want to remove these once they've done their job so desperate times call for desperate measures I wouldn't normally do this but because it is uh, we got a fish a dead fish I don't want more dead fish so we have to handle this right now it's good to have things like that on hand those kinds of products that you can throw in there in an emergency like this and uh, so the the 50 percent water change should get us down to in the kind of 125 percent or 125 parts per million range uh, the products that i'm putting in there they'll help to absorb stuff right away i would say within well with another water change tomorrow probably two or three days we're gonna be back down to safe and healthy measures and i will put those water test updates in as we go All right, it's been 24 hours. Let's do a water test, see where we're at. This will take about 30 seconds to set, so I'm gonna cut the video and we'll come back. All right, I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but it looks like we're getting closer to the 100, maybe 120 range. Which is about what I expected. So we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna do another, another water change. And uh, I guess I really haven't talked to you much about this pond here. So we'll do that. We'll talk about this pond. We'll do another water change. And we should be getting ourselves back down to pretty healthy ranges here after that water change. And then a little bit more time for the activated carbon and zeolites and that nitrate absorbing pad to do their job. So before too long here, we actually have to do an addition on this because we have too many catfish and not enough water volume. So we're going to need to add another tank. Uh, but for right now, let's get that water change done. That'll start with turning off the pump. Okay, pump is off. So now the water will drain out from here down to its lowest level that it can. It's going to continue to fill up over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to open this valve right here and we're going to let our, our radial flow settler drain out. I can do this one-handed 
All right, there we go. Couldn't do it one-handed, had to put the phone down. But there we go, it's draining now. So that's gonna drain out. Let's open this up. I'm gonna shut the UV light off. Okay, so here you can see how my radio flow settler is set up. And I just cleaned this out last night, uh, pulling out the solids that were in there. It had collected quite a bit, but you can see we're already getting some more in there. Okay, so while the water's draining out from the radio flow settler, we're going to grab our gravel vac and we'll start siphoning the water out of the biofilter. Okay, pardon my gravel vac. It's got duct tape all over it because I stepped on it last night in the dark. Um, but if you haven't used one of these before, they're really simple. Uh, to get this siphon started, we're just going to fill this up with water here. Okay, and then we're going to raise the level of this water up until until we start getting water coming out of here All right once we start getting water out of there we'll take this out put this back down and let it start draining on the ground um, or in a bucket the best thing to do is actually put it into a bucket so that you can capture that water and then go put it put it into your garden water your plants with it so we're just going to drain this one out now We've got our radio flow settler over there draining then we'll drain the sump and then we'll refill everything okay so i've shown this before i know but i think it's important anytime i'm talking about adding water to the pond to remind people you have to take the chlorine and chloramine out of your water before you put it in there otherwise you can kill your fish you can kill all the healthy bacteria that you've got and you can ruin your whole system so i use this uh, little boogie blue filter it's a pre-filter that goes on my hose uh, that I can take straight then out of the hose into the pond because I know my pH levels are pretty close out of the hose as to what is in my pond and that's going to make the water safe. Whatever you do, however you, you do it, there are multiple ways you can remove the chlorine and chloramine but you've got to remove it before you put it in the water. Alright, so we've got these drained about as much as we're going to get them drained. Okay, and we took about another 25 to 30 gallons or so out of that pond. So we're gonna go ahead and refill it. Make sure your hose water is not scorching hot from sitting in the sun, right? And uh, go ahead and fill them up. So while this is filling up here, we talked to you a little bit about this, um, this pump here. So you'll see that it has this adjustable valve here so you can adjust how much water flow is going through. And this likes to get clogged up with little crustaceans, um, stones, whatever gets in there, gunk, sometimes it's algae buildup, whatever it is, and that will really impede the, the water flow. So I tried to hook up this little, like a little cage here, and I put this mesh bag over it. The, the cage just keeps the mesh bag from getting sucked down to it, because that also will impede the water flow. But then uh, we throw it into this little bag. Use a little wire to tie it off. And that keeps all the crustaceans and stuff from being able to get on there and clog that up so that it doesn't, so that it impedes its ability to work properly. In case you're wondering, hey man, why you got those bricks in there? That's because, uh, I had a, a time in the past where some of my filter media, the floss stuff, was getting sucked into here and making it so that water couldn't flow. So the bricks just hold everything down in place. All right, so I've let the water cycle through here for a couple of hours. Uh, let's go ahead and do another water test and see where we're at. All right, can you, can you see that? Maybe not. All right, I don't know if you could see that. I think we we're in the 50, 60 ranges there, which is about half of where we started the day at, which is what I would expect from doing a 50%, 60% water change. Um, so a couple more days for the carbon, activated carbon and zeolites and that nitrate absorbing pad, uh, they should do their job and we should be back to healthy ranges. Um, so lesson learned, 
Make sure you're testing your water regularly. Like I said, it's only been a couple of weeks since I tested it last and it was fine, but something occurred that caused it to spike up here in the last week or two. And uh, we got a dead fish. Well, at least I think that's what the, the cause. It could be something else that killed that fish, but who knows? All right, well, that's pretty much it, but I have a, a dad joke to leave you with. All right, what did the Zen master say to the hot dog seller? That's right, the Zen master to the hot dog seller. What did he say? He said, make me one with everything. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a line if you have any questions or comments. Bye-bye.